Never cook again. Oh, I'm gonna cook again. Alright y'all, so before we get into ranking these animes, let me just go ahead and address what I think makes a good anime. I think anything that's gonna be an S tier was a show that I was addicted to watching at some point, or there was just something that happened at like the end of the show that was so amazing and mind-blowing that I would feel guilty for putting it in an A tier. But off the rip, I'm gonna start this tier list off controversial. We've got Jujutsu Kaisen, specifically season one of Jujutsu Kaisen. This show is, in my opinion, the most overrated anime to ever exist. I'm putting it in C tier. Right, I don't buddy. care, bro. Now you know what? Actually, I'll that's put it. I'll good. put it in B. I think the fight scenes in in the anime are really, really cool to watch. But that's like the only great redeeming thing that this anime has going for it. I think the story was kind of hard to keep up with. The characters are generic. It especially doesn't help the fact that they're all wearing like the same school uniform thing. So it's much harder for them to stand out. And a lot of people say that this is like a copy of Naruto, and I think that's kind of unfair. I will say that this show is definitely its own show. It has its own thing going on. But at the same time, I do think that the way they execute the plot and how the characters behave is very generic in my opinion. Alright, next we have Naruto. Kid Naruto going in A, Naruto Shippuden going in S. And I think there's just no debate. Kid Naruto was already a solid show as it was. And then Naruto Shippuden just took what was already a good show and added more characters, more jutsus, more story. And what I like about this anime is that because it's a long anime, you could slowly see Naruto progressively getting better and better with each arc. And I know huge shows like this might turn some people off. But I'm telling you right now, if you skip the filler, it's really not that bad. I didn't know what filler was when I was watching Kid Naruto though. So I swear I literally saw this man Sasuke's parents get like 50 times it was ridiculous but yeah man overall great show all right next we have demon slayer demon slayer in my opinion has probably some of the best art in all of anime i think from the very first episode it's very easy to get addicted to watching the show however there are a lot of slow moments in the show the ending of the first season was spectacular but i'm gonna go ahead and give it an a the second season of demon slayer was really good i really liked watching tanjiro fully embrace the fiery side that he got from his dad and the fights towards the end of the season were just absolutely phenomenal Probably peak fight scenes in all of anime. I have to give this show an S. It, it would be criminal not to. Season 3 was definitely the weakest of all the seasons, but it was still solid nonetheless. My only major complaint about the season though is that that one Hashira, I forgot his name, was literally stuck in that water prison for what felt like five episodes. Like, bro, how long is it gonna take you to get out? Man was literally holding his breath for like two days. Nonetheless, I'm still gonna give it an A, but it's definitely gonna be like a low A, more like an A minus. Well, we went ahead and ranked the most most overrated anime, now we have the most overhated anime, My Hero Academia. Like I swear, people literally hate this anime just because of the community. Like goodness gracious, is it really that difficult to form your own opinion? If the show is good, the show is good. Who cares about how the community perceives it? With that being said, let's go ahead and speed run all the seasons. Season 1 was a great introduction to the show, Go Beyond plus Ultra is iconic, but we haven't really gotten a chance to get to know all the other characters yet, and it truly did just feel like an intro to the show. I'm still gonna give it an A tier. Season 2, S tier. Sports Festival was peak. Hero Killer was peak. Need I say more? Season 3, again, another solid season. Uh, this season focused more on like the heroes expanding on their quirks and just training more in general. But I still really, really like the idea of all the classes going against each other and showing off their skills. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in A tier. Now, Season 4 was a bit hot and cold. They kind of took a different approach with the main villain in the sense that instead of having all the fights out in the open, it was more of like an infiltration hostage situation that the heroes had to go through and it takes a little bit to get used to that but once when you do the fights actually turn out pretty good overhaul in general is just a great villain i must say though you could definitely tell that this is the fourth season of the show as there is a lot of slow moments throughout the season it's still good nonetheless but i'm gonna have to give it That's a pretty B tier. Good. season five without a doubt the worst season in the whole entire show it's D the tier. biggest like, piece what of dog was shit sure we got to see more of the quiet little instigator hero do his own thing and show off a little bit but literally the rest of the season was just filled with filler i don't know bro i really think I think this season was just a huge setup for the next season because season six was an absolute banger s tier there's nothing like a good war arc in anime and my hero academia absolutely did it to perfection not only did we get this huge war at the first half of the season but then on the second half we got vigilante midoriya razuku midoriya himself like this season was most definitely a banger if you're still hating on my hero academia after watching this season then i don't know dude you just must be an npc or something like you just can't think for yourself because this season was solid all right 
right, next we have Fire Force, and I think I'm about to get some more hate for this one. I'm not gonna lie, the show just didn't hit for me. It wasn't really bad, but it wasn't really good to me either. I, I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but I do not read manga at all. I only watch the animated series. So a lot of people like to say that this show is good because of how well they animated the manga, but because I don't read manga, that's irrelevant to me. I'm gonna put it in C. There was just nothing really special that sparked out to me. And once again, all the main characters were wearing the same outfit, so it was a bit harder for me to remember each unique character. I don't even remember the main character's name for crying out loud. All right, next we have Seven Deadly Sins. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this was literally like the third anime I've ever watched all the way back in like eighth grade, so I really don't remember this show at all. But I do remember that the characters were very, very unique, and just in general, the show had a unique style to it. The fight scenes were pretty good as well. The only thing I didn't really like about it is that the ending was a little bit rushed in my opinion. But with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in A tier. All right, now for this segment of the video, we're gonna be quickly ranking anime that I consider to be non-mainstream, starting with Skate the Infinity. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I came in with the wrong expectations for this show. I was expecting to watch some teenagers hang out together, do some cool tricks, and occasionally beef with another crew of skaters. But instead, what we get is a bunch of narcissists just racing on the same trail over and over and over. Like, imagine if Skate 3 had one death race location, but every time you played it, you went against different people. That would be super boring. I'm sorry, I can't give this show anything higher than a C tier. All right, next we have Kake Gudari. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but whatever. This show checked all the boxes for me. Unique art style, unique characters, unique plot, and a whole lineup of waifus. But I must say, the only thing holding this show back from being an S tier is the fact that the ending was a little bit rushed, and also, every time they played a game, I had no idea what was going on. And I know that's kind of my fault, but it was hard to keep up with all the rules that they were explaining. The show still made everything really entertaining, though, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it an A tier. All right, next we have Tomo-chan is a girl. This was the only, like, real romance anime that I've ever watched. And I must say, for what it is, it's not that bad. There are a lot of corny moments here and there, but it is a rom-com. That's kind of the whole point. But my major complaint is that the two main characters ended up getting together at the end of the show, but there was no romance. Like, they just told each other that they liked each other, and that was it. I'm sorry, dude. I'm gonna have to give this show a C I mean, tier as well, but right, I think I did right. slightly enjoy watching this more than Fire Force, if I'm being for real. Alright, next we have Yurisai Yatsura. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. This was one of those comedy shows where something different would happen every episode and there was no real main story. But it was actually really funny, and this show has a very, very great art style that's very appealing to the eye. This show also has a lineup of waifus, so it gets a plus. I'm gonna go ahead and that's put it in good. B tier. And finally, we have Reincarnated as a Sword. This was the only isekai anime that I've watched, and I do like the RPG video game aspect of it. And even though it was an action show, it kind of felt more like a comfort show. I think the main appeal about the show for me is that at the time when I was watching it, I knew that nobody else really knew about it. So it kind of felt like I was the only one that knew about this hidden gem. And also the opening is solid as well. I'm gonna go ahead and put this That's in B tier as well. Okay, I don't know why I said finally for that last one because we still have Trigun the Stampede. This show proves exactly why you should wait till the anime is finished instead of watching it every week. It also proves why I watch my anime in dub. Oh my gosh, everyone just disliked the video and clicked off. I watched my anime in dub, sue me. This show is really my reason why for it because I watched it when it was coming out weekly in sub. And I must say, this show has very, very good voice acting, very, very nice scenes that are appealing to the eye, and just in general, a lot of emotion behind it. But here's my problem. I had no idea what was going on. That's exactly why I need to watch shows in English, man. I'm sorry. Nonetheless, I'm still gonna throw it in an A tier. Alright, next we have Attack on Titan. This was the first anime that I've ever watched, and honestly, I really wouldn't recommend this show to anyone who is watching anime for the first time, as it is a very, very unique and different show compared to all the other anime that we have on this list. But nonetheless, it was an epic show. From beginning to end, there was nothing but suspense and drama. Again, this was my first anime, so I don't remember too much from it, but I'm still gonna put it in A tier. The second season was just as good and had a few plot twists here and there as well. I do remember them taking a bit of a different approach with this season, though, as they had, like, the main characters cooped up in, like, a tower. Either way, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in A tier as well. Alright, next we have Chainsaw Man. I definitely love the fight scenes a lot in the show, and there's definitely a lot of unique side characters as well. And just like the first season of My Hero Academia, this first season felt more like an intro to the show. My only major complaint, though, is that I don't really like the main character, Denji. Like, he's just alright. I feel like with the way his motives are, it makes the show feel more like a One Punch Man plot than, like, an actual serious plot. But as I said, the show is solid, so I'm still gonna go ahead and put it in A tier. Alright, 
All right, next we have Classroom of the Elite. I remember a girl from school telling me about the plot of this show, and I remember thinking to myself, wow, that sounds really boring. I'm not watching this. But then I had another friend recommend it to me as well, and then I started getting TikTok edits on this show as well, because you know TikTok be listening to your conversations and whatnot. So I decided, what the heck, I'll give it a watch. And after watching all 12 episodes, I must say, I was completely right on my assumptions. This show was boring. D tier, bro. Like shit. it's some teenagers going to school and wanting to get good grades so they can be in a higher class. Who cares? I honestly don't see why this show is getting the praise that it's getting, but that's just me, I guess. All right, next we have Dr. Stone. And off rip, I'm just gonna put all three seasons in A tier. I absolutely love the idea of just Minecraft in an anime. And I really love seeing how this guy's home base just kept progressing and progressing with each episode. Now, of course, I had no idea what he was doing and how he was making these things, but it was still entertaining nonetheless. And that's kind of how it was with every season. You know, every now and then he would go out exploring and meet new characters, and then he would get back to home base to make something new. And while it can get repetitive at times, there was still brand new stuff happening all the time. All right, next we have my favorite anime of all time. Death Note. Easiest S tier ever, bro. You're introduced to the show in the first episode and you're hooked by the second episode, bro. And each episode, it progressively just gets better and better. I love the rivalry between Light and L, bro. It was iconic. If you haven't seen Death Note yet, go watch it. If you're currently watching something else, drop that show and go watch Death Note. If you don't watch anime, uh, well, first of all, what a loser. Second, make Death Note your first anime. I'm telling you right now, this show is an absolute must-watch 10 out of 10 masterpiece. Please go watch it. All right, next we have Spy X Family. This show is without a doubt the best comfort show when it comes to anime. I'm gonna go ahead and give the first season an S tier. I'm never really a huge fan of Slice of Life, but this show is the only exception. It was just fun to see the major elephants in the room interact with each other, how everyone has their own unique little secret that they're trying to keep from each other, and how it made the interactions all the more funnier. And also, so Yor is literally the best anime waifu of all time, so you know it gets major bonus points for that. Now, with season one, I kind of thought that Lloyd was going to be the main character, but as the show progressed, I think the writers realized that Anya was really the character that was going to keep people watching. And so with the second season, they focused a lot more on her and just her school life. And honestly, I wasn't really the biggest fan of that. I think it kind of made the show a little bit more boring. I really like the whole family aspect of everything. You know, I don't really care for seeing all these little kids interact with each other. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put the second season in A tier. Or I'm sorry, not the second season, the part two to the first season. The second season is gonna go in A tier as well. It kind of did the same thing that I mentioned earlier, but this time they had a lot more episodes that focused on your, which I really, really liked a lot, but it was still kind of missing that family aspect that I really liked about the first season. All right, next we have Cyberpunk Edge Runners. From top to bottom, this show checks off all the boxes. Cool art style, cool characters, cool story, and a good waifu. And honestly, it's a bit hard for me to recall some of the things that happened in the show, which I think is something that's inevitable for a show that's only 10 episodes. They kind of crammed a lot of things in and it was super fast paced, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Either way though, I'm gonna go ahead and give the show an A tier. All right, A tier is looking a bit cluttered, so I think I'm gonna drop Demon Slayer Season 3 to B tier, hey, along with Trigun Stampede good. as well. All right, next we have One Punch Man. Once again, this show checked off all the boxes for having good characters, good art style, and good story. And while I did love the comedic approach to it, it's kind of hard to put this show in the same tier as all these other shows. Either way though, it's still a solid show. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in A tier. It kind of has that Dragon Ball Z feel to it with the fights being super explosive and the characters being all colorful. I liked it a lot. Now, One Punch Man season two on the other hand. Yeah, bro, like, I don't it's know the biggest what piece of this dog was. Shit. Like, I don't know what they were thinking with this. Saitama was hardly prevalent in any of the episodes. And the main villain is, is literally a villain because he thinks that villains are cool, like, Okay. I don't know, bruh. If it weren't for the fact that it's One Punch Man, I would probably put this season in, in C tier. But because the first season set the bar so high and the second season failed to meet up to that so badly, I can't help but put it in D tier. I'm sorry. It was probably the biggest disappointment for me. All right, next we have JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 1. I remember this part being a little boring. I mean, it was the intro to the whole show. The only thing I really remember about it was Dio! Dio, no! I'm gonna go I mean, ahead and give it a C. Right. Part two, however, was legendary. S tier, bro. Bro, Joseph Joestar was such a fun character to watch. It was so interesting to me how he outsmarted the most intelligent villains. And the ending was just so amazing, bro. There was also this one character that kept coming in clutch every time, bro. Like, he was the best side character ever. Rudolf von Stroheim, bro. This man was always coming in clutch. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to Mob Psycho. 
Once again, I know I'm about to get a lot of hate for this, Mob Psycho was a bit boring to me. I think the few fight scenes that they did have in the show were very, very fun to watch. But another downside about it is that I, don't, I didn't really mess with the art style either. I'll give it props like it is unique, but it just didn't really click with me. I'm gonna go ahead and give the first I mean, season a C right. tier. The second season though was definitely a huge step up because this man Arataka was literally carrying the show by getting away with gaslighting literally everybody. Really goes to show that Mob is just really not that interesting of a main character. That's just my opinion though. I know I'm about to get so much hate for that, but there was still a lot of slow moments in the show. I'm gonna go ahead and give this That's season a good. B tier. All right, next we have Tokyo Ghoul. Easy S tier, bro. This was the first ever show that I watched where it made you sympathize with the characters that were going against humans. And I loved how they made the main character kind of side with both and try to see both sides. And the art style in the show, is it's not super unique, but the environment is so aesthetically pleasing. The coffee shop to me is like iconic, dude. And just the way the characters look and like their masks, it's, it's just all so cool to me. And then we've got the second season where Kaneki was kind of going rogue and there was a huge war between the ghouls and the CCG. If there was one character I couldn't stand though was that Stitch Boy. Oh my gosh, bro. That man was really taking out the ghouls one by one, bro. It was so sad to see. The ending of the season was amazing to watch too, man. So with that being said, this is the only show on this tier list to have back-to-back -back S tiers, bro. This is probably my second favorite anime of all time. And even though I wouldn't really recommend it to anyone who's new to watching anime, because it does have a bit of an edgy side, I would highly recommend it to those who are kind of looking for something to watch. And then we have Tokyo Ghoul Re, bro. It's the biggest piece of dog shit. Like, do I do I gotta talk about it? Do I gotta talk about it, bro? You took everything that made Kaneki cool and just took it away from him. Not only that, but you made a whole squad of one-eyed ghouls, something that made Kaneki unique and made him the main reason for being the main character, and you gave this to a bunch of generic side characters too, bro. Let's talk about the next show before I get mad. Next, we've got Hell's Paradise. In my humble and honest opinion, I think the show is literally the better version of Jujutsu. Kaisen. I'm putting it in A tier. I think the fight scenes between Hell's Paradise and Jujutsu Kaisen were very similar to each other. And I mean, it makes sense. They were both animated by Mappa Studios. But this show was just more aesthetically pleasing as far as the art style. And all the characters were kind of unique in their own way as well. But not in like a boring generic way. Like making your character talk in only sushi ingredients. Like... What, bro? Next, we have Afro Samurai. Now, considering that this show was only five episodes, it's basically just a movie. While I do think that the art style is a bit grim and gray, I think it has a very, very nice swagger to it. It kind of reminded me of Samurai Jack, how the main character would just blow by everyone with no effort. But the one thing holding the show back was how rushed the ending was, bro. Out of all the animes I've ever watched, this was probably the most rushed ending ever. And while the show was still very good, it does take it down a few notches. So I'm gonna go ahead and give That's this show good. a B. All right, last but not least, we have Akame Got Kill. Watching this show kind of reminded me of like the Avengers, but anime version. And if the whole team was filled with a bunch of waifus. My only complaint about the show, which I don't even know if, if it's a valid complaint to be honest with you, but literally every single character would just, would just die, including the main character. Like, I don't care what anyone says, Tatsumi's the main character, not Akame. Dude, I remember watching this show and telling my friend about it at school. And he was like, oh yeah, man, it gets really interesting because the person that you think is the main character is not actually the main character and i was like what no way so i was waiting for this twist to happen and it happened at the end of the show like i'm sorry that does not make her the main character the whole show was focused around tatsumi anyways ma'am i'm gonna go ahead and put the show in a tier <laughs> all right and after a bit of rearranging this is my final tier list as you can see we've got a lot of bangers on here but let me know what you guys think in the comments i have a video similar to this where i rank cartoon network cartoons instead so if you're interested in that video go ahead and click the video on screen